Hello friends, welcome back to the High Path channel. Today I'm spending some time in the kitchen without the kids. Now as much as I love having them around, weekends are their time to play with friends and it leaves me to a little bit of a solo kitchen time which I really enjoy as well. Sometimes it's definitely nice to just savor these moments by myself or, you know, with Trey since Trey is in here in the kitchen with me. Uh, it's nice and peaceful. I don't feel like I am rushing. Weekends feel so much more relaxed. There's no pressure to meet deadlines and I can take my time in the kitchen, maybe experiment with new recipes, ideas, you know, cook with Trey, just have some fun. Today I'm making two types of wonton, a soup wonton, which is perfect for a cozy, comforting meal. It is going into fall, so I'm getting into more soups and things like that. So wonton soup definitely sounded so good today. Also, it is more healthy than the fried version, but of course I'm also gonna be making a fried wonton, which is always a hit with the kids. They love the crispy crunch, so I usually make a batch for them to enjoy later when they're back from playing. And it's nice to be able to make it a bit of a variety, especially when I have time to really enjoy the process as well. Growing up in Taiwan, I ate a lot of dumplings. We call them shui jiao. They are a thicker dumpling wrapper than a one-ton wrapper, which is what we can only find at our local Walmart or um, grocery store here. But if you do prefer like the traditional Taiwanese type of dumpling, definitely go for a thicker dumpling skin. You can also purchase this at like a Asian or Chinese grocery store. There are two types of dumplings that we eat in Taiwan. One, like I said, it was called shui jiao. It is a, usually a mix of meat and cabbage, and we just boil them. The other one is guo tie, which is kind of like pot stickers here in the United States. And since my mom is from Hong Kong, we also ate a lot of wonton, which is also a lot of um, wonton noodles. If you have ever been to Hong Kong or even Singapore, Southern, or Southeast Asian countries, you would have seen many street stalls have uh, something called hun dun mian or one ton noodles basically little one ton dumplings are boiled and they are served right next to a plate of noodles which were also coated with this delicious soy sauce and uh, a side of little tasu meat it was delicious and very very popular Oftentimes, I do think about Taiwan and Hong Kong a lot, especially Singapore, because I spent a lot of my years in Singapore. I definitely miss it, especially the inconvenience and all of the delicious food that is out there. I try to make these Chinese dishes at home, but they just never taste the same. In our home, we love to include diversity and make different types of cuisines for our kids to slowly learn and develop their taste buds and uh, really just introduce them to other cultures out there because there are other cultures and all of their food is so great. As you may know, we love to cook with our kids. We love to teach them these life skills involve them in the process, whether it's stirring, chopping, learning to fold one tons, whatever it is, it's a great way to also bond and teach them life skills while also making the whole process fun, of course. As some of you have seen, since it's a weekend, I definitely like to make all of the meals that we're gonna eat at once, so I am not in the kitchen the whole day. I'm working on our wontons. This is going to be for lunch and possibly dinner as well. We're not sure how much we have we will have left over. I'm also going to be preparing Trey's lunch and some dinner. We are going to make some quinoa for dinner tonight so we have food for the whole day. Weekends are for us to relax and do what we like. We are not rushed with homeschooling, uh, business, all that stuff. So I like to take just about a couple of hours to make lunch and dinner, whatever that we need for the whole day. I also like to incorporate this kind of cooking during a hectic week during the weekdays as well. Sometimes I don't record, so I do like to just make everything at once. It's basically like meal prep for the day almost. You cook once and you eat for the whole day. One thing I've learned over time is how valuable it is to cook once and eat all day. You know, with a busy household like ours, it just makes sense to prepare a few dishes at once and then we're set for the day. It not only saves time, but also allows me to focus on other things without having to 
constantly worry about what's for the next meal. It definitely strengthens my multitasking skills in the kitchen. Today, for example, I'm making wontons for both soup and frying, preparing lunch for tray and quinoa for dinner, all at the same time. It's like a, like a balancing act, but once you get into the rhythm, it becomes second nature. You learn to manage different components of a meal efficiently, timing everything so that it all just comes together at the end. So even though it does require a bit of focus, I find it rewarding because it frees up the rest of the day for other things. Plus, it's just a great way to keep variety on the table without having to constantly cook every single meal. This quinoa salad is one of our favorites. It's so easy to make after mixing all of the ingredients together. Let it just sit and dinner is done. Trey, my husband, he is a very simple guy. Little simple things make him very happy. I am just roasting some vegetables. I've got some broccoli going into the oven while the potatoes were cooking for about 20 minutes ahead. The broccoli only needs about 15, 20 minutes as well in the oven. And then it is ready for lunch. You can see that the potatoes have been roasting for about 20 minutes at about 400 degrees convection. And uh, I am just kind of tossing it because I want all of the sides to be nice and golden brown and roasted to perfection. I'm gonna put that back in for another 15, 20 minutes. Every time we make one tons, I like to have the kids help because the more hands, the better. We have a lot of one tons to wrap. It is a tedious task kind of, but it's also kind of therapeutic and relaxing. Today, I am starting our one tons by myself. I have a whole pot of filling and I just bought the regular conventional one ton wrappers that I could find at our local Walmart. And I'm gonna make the best of what we have. If you're new to one ton wrapping or one ton making, it is so easy, it is so fun. There are tons of ways you can wrap a one ton. So it depends on how you are cooking them. For example, if you are frying them, I would recommend just wrapping them like this. You're going to just make them into triangles. That way when you're frying them in a shallow pan, it will crisp up the edges really, really nice. Another way that I'm showing you is kind of gathering the four sides together, sticking them into a little dumpling, sort of, it's called like a little golden nugget, and uh, it looks like this. You just fold all the sides in one and then just pinch it in the middle. This little golden nugget way, I love to make these for either frying or boiling as well. I also wanted to experiment with another way and it's kind of like cigar rolling almost. So I have the filling in the middle. I'm going to just fold the top over to seal and I'm gonna seal the sides as well, making sort of a flat cigar, I would say. And this is also a great shape for frying because it's nice and flat. So anything that is flat, it's perfect for frying. One last way I'm gonna show you, this is perfect for boiling. You're going to wet all four sides of your wrapper. You're going to make it into a triangle like the first wrap. And then we're going to bring the two sides, the two corners together. You're going to wet one side of the uh, one ton wrapper and then just stick it together. And then that makes a beautiful little, also kind of like a golden nugget in Chinese, in the Chinese culture, and it's perfect for boiling. As you can see, the potatoes are roasted to perfection. Everything is nice and golden brown. I am going to make a plate, really, all this food is going to go to uh, my husband, Trey. Uh, although I probably cut a little too many potatoes, but I really was just leaning towards him, not finishing all, so I could have a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, I also left some of the roasted broccoli aside because I wanted to put that into our quinoa for dinner tonight as well.
I am going to prepare a pan on the right for frying our wonton. And then on the left side, I'm going to prepare a soup base for our soup wonton. So I've just got some water going into a pot. I'm going to make a very simple soup. I'm going to put a few slices of ginger in here. I'm also going to flavor this. Most of the flavor is going to come from our organic miso paste. Miso is a fermented soybean type product that is that originates in Japan. It adds a beautiful salty umami taste to it. It is so good. If you haven't tried it, definitely give it a shot. I'm also going to add some white parts of a green onion. Trey decided he wanted to come help me wrap one tons, which I was so grateful for because we did have a lot more to go. Traditionally, if you are making dumplings in a Chinese household, the whole family kind of sits around a table and kind of just helps wrap these. I've also seen restaurants where they wrap them so fast, they kind of just put the filling in the wrapper and then just scrunch up their fist and there goes a one ton. In our pan here, I've got some coconut oil that I'm getting ready for frying and then our miso soup I'm just tasting. It definitely needed a little bit of sweetness. If I had some sake here, I would love to use it as well. And uh, it's time to cook the wontons. So I'm gonna start cooking them while Trey is gonna help me with uh, the wonton. He is in the middle of also eating lunch, but also helping me with the rest of our wontons. These wontons cook up really super duper fast, so I am going to lower them onto our oil. They only need about like 30 minutes to maybe a minute on each side or so, depending on how hot you have the oil or the pan. I have it at about a medium high heat, maybe like a 6 to 7 out of 10 on my setting, and it usually works out really, really great. It does not burn the one ton, but just make sure that you're watching your heat as well. As soon as they're nice and golden brown, they are done. Flip them over to the other side. We're gonna cook it for about 30 seconds to a minute on the other side as well. And it is done and ready to plate. As you can see on the pan, the flatter that it is, the better for shallow frying. I don't like to deep fry them because I don't want to use too much oil. So the flatter, the better for a very shallow fry. Last but not least, we are going to cook our soup one tons. So I've got our little golden nugget shaped little one ton. We're gonna just drop it into some hot soup. This only needs to cook for about two, three minutes and it is done. You don't have to boil them for too, too long because the one ton skins are just so thin and they cook up so fast and so easily. We cook them directly in the broth that we're serving it in. It will thicken it up because of the flour that's on the one ton and after that it is done and ready to serve so quick and so easy if you are making a non-vegan one ton you want to make sure that you cook it a lot longer because the meat inside obviously needs a lot longer to cook
We call the kids in from playing outside to have some lunch with us. They all enjoyed both of them equally, which is surprising because they normally like to uh, eat the crispy ones, but that soup and that one ton in the soup, it's so nice and soft, but not overly cooked. So the wrapper is not just overcooked and falling apart. We thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for hanging out with us this weekend. We hope that you subscribe if you're new and we will see you on the next video. Bye everybody.